David Kennedy here, Canopy MLS and Realtor Association president here with yet another ordinary realtor who happened to do some extraordinary things. Hi, Jennifer, how are you? I'm good, how are you, David? I'm all right, so tell us, when did the magnificence of Jennifer Frontera begin in the real estate industry? When did you become a realtor or get into the real estate industry? Um, in 1997. 97. Mm -hmm. Was that here in Charlotte? Was that it was here in Charlotte. All right. So who'd you start with? What, who's the firm you were with then? I started with Mathers Realty uh -huh. and um, worked there for a number of years. And then I moved on to Wanda Smith and Associates. And I'm still there now. One, the legendary Wanda mm -hmm. Smith, Tony. Um, what kind of, uh, did he have a hand? Did they have a hand in you um, volunteering and serving here? What kind of motivated you to begin uh, serving, uh, volunteering at the association? Originally, I started young kids. I actually was pregnant when I got my license, so I was doing volunteering at school and things like that. And the first committee that I signed up for at orientation was the um, Charitable Association, I think is what it was called. That was a long time ago. It's, it's now the foundation, but at that time it was, a, um, and we did, you know, Christmas presents, I think at Christmas, I remember wrapping presents that first year. Um, and then I got into Leadership Academy. And what year was that? Uh, 2001, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, MLS Advisory Committee. Um, it, just, it was just kind of snowballed from there. So on the foundation side, you were there, you were there when we started to do the, the home giveaway. Yes. So how did that come about? The home giveaway. Yeah. I think it was just a matter of wanting to do something else, wanting to do more than um, than just presence and things like that, having more of an impact in the housing industry. So I, as I kind of remember, I think there were some challenges in trying to figure out how to give a home away. It was not just finding a builder to do it or or somewhere to have the home. There were tax consequences and there were a lot of rules and things you can just give a home away. So, and then I think, I remember partnering with um, organizations to recommend people. Um, and I would just remember that was just a really neat thing. It was a lot of excitement to give a house away. So we go from a home giveaway to when you're in, in the executive level, we start doing Realtors Care Day. How, mm -hmm. did, how did that come about? That came about by um, another, someone way better than me, Joe Remsen. <laughs> He's better than all of us. <laughs> yes. Um, I had an idea and you know he is someone who once he has an idea and then you get with Terry Marshall um, and they just make things happen. So let's we kind of run the, a brief gamut of, of your foundation experience. By the way you are still on the board of the foundation here to this day uh, but you've done other things in other areas. You back in like the 99, 2000, 2003, we have talked about in the late 90s, there was a movement to move away from the listing books and onto like a more computerized system. Um, rumor has it you were tapped to lead a task force to figure out which, uh, which service we were gonna use for this computer-based system. I think but it was like the internet MLS task force. Not a big deal. No, 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 no. this is huge, mm -hmm. so you get all of a sudden, we have this trend mm -hmm. that, that goes, okay, let's, we're going more digital, we're going more computers, um, and then they, we figure out we gotta, we got to come up with a service or, or, or something to kind of help navigate this, and you're in charge. <laughs> What's the first thing that pops in your mind when you're tapped to lead this? It's huge. It's important. Everything was in-house, so I don't think in the beginning the realization was how big it was. But at the time, we were getting floppy disks and putting them into a, a computer. Maybe it was a CD-ROM. Maybe I'm floppy disk is too far back. But a CD-ROM and putting it in the computer, and you have it right on your a desktop in the office. Um, and not a lot of people even had laptops then. I mean, this was before people, everybody had a laptop or a tablet or something else. So um, we started talking to vendors, and we started having people come in and, and talk to us here and do demonstrations and then we started thinking about um, what kind of specifications. We Now we have to tell members what kind of computers they need to buy or what kind of hardware they had to have because not everybody had that technology back then. Um, I remember um, 
we had to, we started really seriously researching it. We flew to New Jersey one day, the committee flew to New Jersey to an um, association there to talk to them about how they felt about one of the products. And then we flew somewhere else, and I can't remember the other, the other city was, but another day we flew to another town in the winter and talked to another association who had the other product so we could get actual, see what they had. Because demos then were not live demos. They were kind of just canned demos. So we wanted to see what people had and, and hear it from them directly. So on one of the steeper learning curves that we would take as association members and MLS mm -hmm. subscribers, trying to figure out that learning curve, you were you were kind of leading the charge. You were in the first car of the roller coaster, saying, hey, this is where we're going, and you were helping to, you were traveling around finding the different possibilities mm -hmm. of what we could be, and then you kind of gather it all together, and then you just bring it back to the task force, do they make it, make well, recommendations? I think the task force did a lot, I mean, we kind of went together for a lot mm -hmm. of these things because, I'd, I'm trying to remember who was on it, I believe, um, Tony might have been on it. I can't remember if Tony was on it, but I, I think, I don't even remember who but was on it. you bring it back to the board? You got to get board We approval. had to have a vote. Okay. And we had a vote and we picked one All and right. then we took it to the board. Okay. And we had to get um, numbers and we um, picked one. We picked the one that we're actually still with today in with Matrix and the CoreLogic and the very different um, changes that's mm -hmm. been across the years. So you start with temp was it Tempo that mm -hmm. we started with? Okay. And then I think ironically when we change from Tempo to Fusion, you're either on EC or you're president. I mean, so when you, you start to graduate into the next level, mm -hmm. the 2.0s of these things, right as an association, our leadership doesn't have to go far. You were there at the beginning, right. so you could help usher that in. How was that when you you finally get everybody to say, okay, we're gonna be using Tempo. Was it a smooth transition from Tempo to Fusion that they kind of keep Tempo around in case people were hesitant to change? What was the kind of, I think we always were open to looking at other options always. I mean, we always want the best choice for the members, um, whether it be cost or whether it be functionality. Um, and I think um, we would do another, you know, there was only so many that would handle an association of our size because software mm -hmm. for MLS is, varies by size. So we, went out, we did another search, another come in and talk to us, and then um, ultimately we picked the same one because it had the best for what we needed yeah. for our members. So big, lot of leadership roles there in the MLS to kind of get us into the internet age. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been a presence for so long on the foundation side. You're also on a task force that has had a multi-million dollar impact on the association as a whole. Talk to us about the Greenwood Cliff Task Force. <laughs> <laughs> so what- After a number of years, you start to forget about all of these exactly. things. Exactly. <laughs> so we have this magnificent building that we're in today. Um, We've talked a little bit with some folks before you that did the, the swap mm -hmm. from the building on Moorhead right. to this location currently, and then they started to accumulate some parcels of land surrounding. Um, during your leadership, uh, we, we encounter some hard economic times, mm -hmm. um, but we had assets and land. Was there ever a... Um, do you ever look back and say, hey, maybe we should sell the land uh, or, or you know, we need to keep it because we are ultimately going to build this? How, how was it hard? Was it hard to kind of hold on to the land? Was there ever a, a, a say, hey, should we sell it or not sell it? Was did that ever come into your mind? No. Okay. Never sell it because we're realtors. Right. And we yeah. knew the value of the land that we had. We knew the value of the location that we had. So that was always um, down the road if things got much worse then that's something that we always had but we were able to just tighten tighten the belt tighten the belt tighten the belt so you were in the executive committee you were on executive committee and executive leadership during uh the great recession during the mm -hmm. downturn what obviously there are challenges that everybody endured but from the perspective of the association what were some of the decisions that you had to make so what were some of the ways that you helped us navigate through the recession 
we tried to find every single possible way in the budget that we could cut things we didn't need without cutting member services. So it was super important to make sure that member services kept intact. We kept giving services to the members that we had. Um, the magazine went digital. I don't remember what year that was, but it's an online magazine. It stopped being a magazine maybe 2011. Um, one of the things that I decided was that I felt that having a installation in the evening that was an event, um, whether it be a gala, a cocktail, whatever it might be, I just felt like that wasn't necessary when you know we still had members that were struggling. Mm -hmm. So we cut that out and we ended up, we already had an expo in the budget, in the books, a date, combining my installation with that because it cut out a lot from the budget and we were able to keep keep in the black. And that that tradition kept on for many years until just recently. Um, I can't remember which date, which year it stopped, but wow, yeah. Little tweaks here and there to kind of keep us financially sound. Mm -hmm. um, well, in, in the lean years, um, somehow keeping us solvent, keeping us going well, we have an opportunity as a result of your leadership. We have this land um, and we have, we assemble the Greenwood Cliff Task Force. Who, who'd you get the call from? Who was on the task force? Who served with well, you? Well, I was on executive. Lori was president. Okay. I remember that. Um, there was, I mean, we had um, Daniel. a commercial guy. Daniel was on there. Anthony Lindsay. Anthony Lindsay, definitely. Remsen. Joe Remsen. Mm -hmm. So you guys were tasked with um, exactly what? I mean, originally we didn't know what. We we were just trying to figure out what what options there were. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I think originally um, we were just going to hold on to the land, and we got approached by someone who had asked if we'd ever sell it, and so the thoughts became real. We had to start thinking about it more. So that's where the task force came about, and we started looking at would we move. If we moved, where would we move to? So we started looking at property. Um, would we buy? Would we build? What, I mean, there were so many things to think about. Um, and ultimately, what th we figured out was that we would never have a better location than the one we have right now. So then it just kept springboarding. How do we take what we have and carve out a piece for us and then do something with the rest of it? So, so finding partners to do those things with. So as a, I try not to insert myself in this, but, and I haven't, but as, a, as an incoming, I'm a brand new board member, and we see Pappas and the other guys. We get two people uh, that are kind of presenting to mm -hmm. us. Um, based on some of the questions and the things that we were, we as a board were advised to be mindful of and look at from you, and this is how I know who the Cliff, Greenwood Cliff Task Force was at that. I didn't know who it was except for one time, and it was Remsen, Lindsay, Daniel Cottingham, and you. You guys were the ones that were there at the very end, and you kind of gave us, hey, if I were you, I would be mindful of this, that, and the other. The decision that we had to make was so much easier because of you guys. <laughs> you know, we don't, I don't even remember who the other guy was, just what the things that you told us were important to be mindful of. It just seemed like Pappas had that in droves. Um, how does it, how does it feel to be on such a, a task force that had so much of an impact with the direction and and with with this now? Like, do you feel when you walk around what, in something like this? What do you? How does it? What are the emotions? At the time, we were in that old building, mm -hmm. and that's what we were used to. And even though we had thoughts about what it could be, everybody I've talked to in that group never imagined it would be what it is now. We just couldn't even have dreamt, dreamt that it would have worked out as well as it did. Um, and the, you know, to be up here, the, you know, the views and it's, cause we're just a group of people in a room yeah. talking, trying so, to, you know, figure out the best thing to do. Well, the, uh, the direction was, was good. So thank you. On behalf of all the 15 <laughs> board members, that 20, 2015 board members, thank you for that. So you, uh, we talked a little bit about kind of your impact as secretary, but then you are president in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, what was 
when you look back, what was the, we'll start with the challenges. What, what were some of the biggest challenges you had in 2012 when you assumed uh, the role of uh, president? Membership had dropped off quite a bit. That was the biggest challenge because originally when this first hit in nine, we still had membership, we still had numbers. As each year passed and more and more realtors were leaving the business for something else, um, that's what drives our budget. So our membership numbers dropped dramatically and our budget changed. So, you know, the cuts had already kind of started, but we just had to keep it intact. Um, I remember there were glimmers of hope that year that it was going to start to change around. And I remember in all my interviews, I would always say, um, I'm cautiously optimistic because I was so afraid, I think we all were, that with what we'd just been through, is it really going to come out of this? Are we really on the way up? Um, in the beginning, we didn't know. And towards the end of the year, it looked much better. But, um, but I said that every single interview, I'm cautious, cautiously optimistic. How um, we, we lost, we had so much attrition during those years. Mm -hmm. It might be tough for you to quantify, but how many of those do you think eventually came back? Do we get some of them back at all? Um, or do you think people kind of, we lost them and we lost them for good? When we look at the building industry, a lot of times we feel mm -hmm. like during the recession, they just, they're used to carrying so much inventory and they just, they took a haircut. I think some probably came, yeah. came back, but I think um, some, we had just had that peak, so we gained a lot of members. Um, when we had the peak market years in, in five, six, and seven. So I think some people just went back to other jobs. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were more lucrative than wanting to do real estate. Um, and I think we have another whole crop now, so. Yeah, what's your favorite, when you look back on the year you were president, or if you have to expand it to where you're on EC, what's, what's your favorite memory? What are you most proud of when you look back on, on that year? My favorite memories have to do with the people that were on EC with me. Um, and who were they? So my year it would have been, Lori Knudsen would have been past president. Okay. Um, and then Eric Locker was president-elect, Joe Remsen, and I think Allison Royal Cone was treasurer. Right. So I believe that's who it was. Right. Um, and then Anne Marie, yeah. obviously. So the people that you work with, it's obviously important you had a, at least one time uh during your years on the executive committee it was an all-female executive committee mm -hmm. is, is that it was that you guys oh nine oh nine mm -hmm. who was on it in oh nine um dot munson was past president right. don anderson was president lynn kessie was president-elect Lori knudsen was treasurer and i was secretary and amory the catsy was the um wow so you, when you, when you, when we see trajectories of, of you know diversity mm -hmm. throughout uh, the association, sometimes women diversifying the industry can get lost, and so we we see the trajectory. You know, sometimes the late '60s, early '70s, there's still some challenges and obstacles. You know, we begin in the '80s where we see um, things kind of more women being in the industry is mm -hmm. not such a, a a big thing, but one of Again, something that can kind of get lost is the diversity of, of having women in the industry. And was it on this diverse, you know, uh, uh, EC that, 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 you know, our attention uh, as an association to diversity was born? Um, was it around 2007 or, or so when we really started focusing on that? Every president has their own um, thing that they want to really um, focus on. Mm -hmm. And Dot Munson's was diversity. And so in 2007, um, she really started pushing for more diversity. Um, I believe that's when the diversity committees, all the, the different versions of them were born. Um, and it was important to start looking at becoming a more diverse organization, a more diverse realtor group, more diverse leadership. So bringing diversity all the way through committees, leadership academy, um, executive committee, board of directors. Um, and I think that the groups that we have today were started from her leadership in 2007. Do you, are, when you see um, leadership here locally, our boards, the representation we have, when you see who we have at the state level, um, you, are, 
is there a sense of pride? Do you think that we reflect, do you think we embrace the spirit of, of what you guys had the forethought to put in when it comes to diversity? I do, and, I, and I'm, I'm proud of what got started that year because sometimes things can be started and fall by the wayside, but I think there was a continued effort to build on it every year, every year, every year, because in you know, a short number of years, we were able to really see the things that got started in 2007 um, come to fruition. So uh, some presidents, uh, once they uh, move on from the executive committee, some keep trucking, uh, some kind of go back, maybe focus on, on their careers. In your case, uh, you continued uh, your leadership as, as a state director um, you're also uh, vice president for North Carolina Realtors, and, and then you've served on various committees. Now, recently, you chaired the forms committee yes. for NCR, and uh, you did that in, in, in an era or in a, in a time where um, there's a lot of talk about a, a down payment checkbox. Mm -hmm. So what, knowing that we're kind of taking a look back on some of these some, some history that's come up, coming up. We also kind of get people who've been there when it all went down, but who are still in the thick of it. So you were right in the thick of the down payment checkbox. Mm -hmm. Kind of what, when was the alarm sound uh, from your recollection? And then kind of what, what did you, what did you, what did you come about to, to how to address it? The alarm sounded back in 2019 when the state had a mosaic um, meeting here in Charlotte and some of the members from Canopy raised the alarm that they did not, were not in favor of the recently changed Form 2T offer to purchase and contract with the down payment assistance checkbox. Um, then that went to the Fair and Affordable Housing Committee. Terry Marshall heard about it. Um, she asked me to talk to, to the committee. Um, from there it went to the board of directors and the executive committee, and a letter was written from Canopy to the forms committee asking to look at that checkbox for the ramifications that it could be discriminatory against people that use down payment assistance. And so that would be spring of 2020, right, when we fell into the whole uh, pandemic mm -hmm. issue. Um, and then it was going to get looked at in fall of 2020, which was when the committee starts looking at things every year. Um, and then things happened. Someone couldn't serve as chair. I was asked to take chair. So um, I'm a firm believer that things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you ask why I was, how I was in places when I was, and I just think that I was placed where I was for a reason and I did what I could when I was in those places and same thing happened, forms committee, and I understood because I talked to Fair and Porter Housing how they felt about it, how strongly they felt about it, and so. So how rare is it for the chair of a state committee to speak to a local committee that has, that brings a concern forward? How rare is that? Does that happen all the time at NCR? Or or is that something that you took upon yourself that I you just I think probably right it happens at local associations, but I think, you know, when Terry Marshall asks you to do something, you're always going to do everything that Terry Marshall <laughs> asks you to do um, <laughs> because you know it's the right thing to do. So, um, but then hearing how people felt about it and um, knowing that then the association was behind it. It wasn't just a committee. Then the association got behind that committee, the president, John Kimbaum wrote a letter. Um, so it got pushed up the ladder the way it needed to, um, and things happen. So now you're in charge of it, and we've, we've got the, you just rolled out the new forms, and it, the down payment checkbox has been removed. Um, you had a great Realtor Hot Topics recently uh, that kind of explained uh, how it, it, now it's a little bit more of an equal playing field. Now it's you, the buyer or the buyer's agent needs to accurately represent uh, things for what they are. And it's not just 
put in a, for lack of a better term, a, a box. Right. Um, so what has been the, the feedback so far on, on that that you've gotten? I think it's, it's positive and negative. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's a tough market. And I think some would rather it be, there be no financing there at all. But we have to remember that these are still just things that have to be disclosed. It, some things affect the seller, some things affect how the transaction goes. There's different forms that have to be signed, different appraisal practices. So um, we tried to remove check boxes as much as possible and leave it open so that it can be filled in depending on whatever the financing was. So you had a ton of you've just been in the right place at the right time. And I know you mentioned you valued the relationships you had on the executive level. Is, is, there, is there one thing that you can look back on your career and your service, just not just on the local level, but the state level that you know, you're extremely proud of, that, that you were a part of? You know, we've talked about MLS, we've talked about Foundation, Greenwood Cliff, uh, Forms, NCR. You're the Ben Ball recipient. Of, you know, you get those state recognitions uh, where you know not everybody gets a gets an award from the state. Uh, so can you, you? You're still in the mix. Yeah. So it's hard to have perspective. Right. Um, There's so many things. It's hard to it's hard to do that. Um, I definitely feel like. The thing that was most impactful to me was when I was on executive committee with, with those women. Um, each of those women was a role model to me. I was the youngest of everybody, and every single person on that committee I learned something from. Um, they were all role models to me. Um, Lynn was patient. Donna was um, always strove for professionalism in the business. Dot wanted diversity. Um, Lori. Um, gets things done. Um, Anne Marie is the most well-respected leader and probably in the, in the country. She is so well known. So traveling with those women, going to meetings, learning things, doing things together, that was the thing that had the most impact on me. But I feel like that was um, where I learned the most. And you know, I just absorbed everything that I learned from all of those, those women. Um, and I carry that forward to everything that I do now. So looking ahead, what advice would you give, you know, realtors today uh, to be mindful of, maybe from the perspective of just as the industry as a whole, or from the perspective of, you know, serving here? Um, if you had something you wanted us to be mindful of, had advice, what would you, what would you tell us? If we could sit in front of the legendary Jennifer Frontera, what, what would we None do? None of us ever did any of this alone. We always work better together. We did things, we accomplished all of this together. Um, I don't know any of the leaders that you've mentioned that would ever say, I did this. It was always, we did these things together. It was all of our minds working together. And I think that's what I would tell the current realtors that are, that are out there now in our, in, our, in our industry. We are better together we are better when we work together, when we um, collaborate together, when we negotiate a transaction together. Um, so all of us together are better than just I.